Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Cert Pros. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Boson XM Max. What is it? How to use it? And most importantly, is it worth it? XM Max provides practice exams that are designed to simulate the real exam as closely as possible. Boson have exams for Cisco, CompTIA, AWS, you name it. But in this video, we're going to be focusing on the Cisco CCNA. Okay, so this is my computer and the Boson exam environment is already installed. Now I'm going to assume you already know how to install basic applications. So we're gonna skip that step. So I'll double click on the desktop icon. Let it load up for a second. And this is the exam environment. Now here you're gonna find all of the exams that you have purchased. As you can see here, I have the Cisco 200-301 CCNA exam. So I'll select that and hit the load exam button. What you'll see here is we have not one, not two, but three exam options. We have exam A, exam B, and exam C. Each exam has 102 questions. So that's 306 in total. So there are lots of ways you can use XIM to prepare for your CCNA exam. This is how I would do it. Once you've read your books, and watched your video courses, links are in the description, come into here and run the first exam, so exam A, and take that exam in the simulation mode. This is going to replicate a real exam environment, so you'll be timed and you won't be able to show your answers. Once you go through your exam, whether you pass or you fail, you're going to really be able to gauge if you're exam ready or not. So I'm going to load a test mock exam. To do this, I'm going to go to choose exam, saved exams, and select this mock exam that I've done already. And then I'll load that. It takes me to the end of the exam and I just need to click end and grade. So once you've done your first simulated exam, this is the screen you'll see. You'll see your score, which in our case is 918, so a good pass. And you'll also see all of the questions. Now I have grayed these questions out because I don't want to get into any trouble with Boson. From here, what you can do is go over to Category Breakdown. And if I make this screen bigger, from here, you'll see your scores for each category. If we put our mouse over each one, we can see the category. So I've got 95% on network fundamentals. So that's a pretty solid score. The next one is network access. I only got 83 there. Then IP connectivity, again, another solid score. IP services, 100%. Security fundamentals, only 83. And automation and programmability, 67%. Oh, my mouse is going all over the place. So let's say this is your exam. By looking at this, we can clearly see that automation is a big point for improvement. Once we've done that, we should also look at security fundamentals and then network access. If we go over to the references tab and then select display all incorrect answers, we're going to see all the recommended documentation for the areas that we're weak on. For example, we have recommended Cisco documentation for HSRP operations. But something I do really like about this, it doesn't just give us Cisco documentation, but if we scroll down, and if you're using the official cert guide, which I definitely recommend you should, it will tell us which chapter to go back and review. Now, if you're not using that book, it's not a problem. They will still provide you with the Cisco documentation as well. So let's exit this exam. So 
So once you've gone back through and read the recommended documentation and read the recommended chapters, it's time to do exam B. Again, run this in simulation mode. And if you fail this exam, just rinse and repeat the same process we did with exam A. By the time you get to exam C, you'll very likely be passing these tests and ready to book your CCNA. So let's take a look at some of these questions. I'll select exam A and we'll run in study mode and then click begin. Okay, so question one, which of the following networks is not defined by RFC 1918? Select the best answer. So RFC 1918 defines private IP addresses. Now, I've already posted a video here on YouTube about IP addresses and private IP addresses. So the question here is asking us which of these is not a private IP address. So I know 192.168.1.0 is a private IP address. Anything between 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255 is a private IP address. So that rules this one out and this one out. I also know that any IP address between 10.0.0.0 and 10.255.255.255 is also a private IP address. So that rules the bottom two out. That leaves us with these two addresses, B and D. Class B private IP addresses is a bit of a strange class because it goes from anything between 172.16.0.0 to 172.3.0.0 to 255.255. So D falls nicely into that range. So I believe the answer is B because it doesn't fall in any of the private IP ranges. So to check our answer, we can come down here and go show answers. And as you can see, we got that right. <laughs> It'd be pretty embarrassing if that was wrong. As you can see, we get a nice detailed explanation of why this was the correct answer. It's also going to give us the official cert guide chapter to review, and also some external sources, which looks like the RFC 1918. So I'm gonna show you a couple more questions. We'll go next. Which of the following IPv6 prefixes is used for a unicast link local address? Select the best answer. So I know what the answer is to this question, but I wanna hear your answer. So leave a comment below what you think the answer to this question is. A, B, C, D, or E? Question three. Switch A and switch B are connected over an 802.1Q trunk link. The native VLAN for this trunk link is configured as VLAN 11 on switch A and VLAN 111 on switch B. All of the hosts reside in the same IP subnet. What of the following is true regarding the connectivity between the hosts in this scenario? Select the best answer. A. Host A can ping host B. B. Host C can ping host D. C. Host D can ping host A. D. None of the hosts can ping each other. Or E host B can ping host C. Again, let me know what you think below in the comments. Okay, so that's enough freebies. Any more and I might start getting angry emails from Boson. So is the Boson XM Max worth it? I 100% believe it is. It's my opinion, and you don't have to look far to find others who agree, that this exam is on par, if not harder, than the real CCNA exam. So once you're comfortably passing tests here, you're ready to get your CCNA certification. If you're thinking about grabbing yourself a copy, there is a link in the description. Now for full transparency, it is an affiliate link and I will get a bit of a kickback from your purchase. But this is at no extra cost to you and it's a great way to support the channel. I hope you found this video helpful 
and I'm looking forward to your answers in the comments. Other than that, thank you for watching.